Scoot Henderson is one of the best point guard prospects the league has ever seen, but he's overshadowed by the generational talent Victor Wembenyama. The NBA is going to regret sleeping on Scoot. Was Scoot slept on in the draft? A year before the 2023 draft, Wemby was already making headlines, with fans and media members counting down the days until he came to the United States. But at that same time, Scoot was making a name for himself in the G League. Bella, active hands from Daniels. Oh, the way oh! Anderson. Oh, he's 17. He's 17. He was only 17 years old, the youngest kid in G League history, and he was already turning the heads of NBA scouts. A teenager making national news sound a little bit like another phenom from two decades ago, LeBron James. Scoot, by all accounts, should have gone number two to the Charlotte Hornets, at the very least. But under the quote-unquote why stewardship of owner Michael Jordan, who's, by the way, led them to be the worst team in the league since he took over, the Hornets drafted Brandon Miller, the guy who just went eight for 41 from the floor in the NCAA tournament. Meanwhile, Scoot has been playing professional basketball since he was 17. Brandon Miller had one of the most disappointing stretches for any good player in college ball, while Scoot, on the other hand, was invited to back-to-back -back NBA Rising Star Challenges to play against NBA rookies. And he's not even 20. The argument is that the Hornets already have LaMelo Ball, a ball-dominant point guard. You don't need two of those, right? Now, Michael Jordan should know better. That's the same reason the Portland Trailblazers drafted Sam Bowie number two over MJ in 1984. They already had a shooting guard, right? But Jordan seemed content with what ended up being his final pick as an owner before selling the team a few weeks ago. What up, dude? What's going on? <laughs> uh, did, can you palm the ball yet? Uh, of course, I was palming the ball <laughs> like a couple days ago. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Well, welcome, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Probably a good idea for Jordan to take the money and run, lest he be known for making one of the worst draft blunders in NBA history. Scoop brings everything to the table. Rarely do you have a point guard who dominates the game as a rookie. Derrick Rose, Chris Paul, Jason Kidd, and a few others have been NBA ready from day one, but for the most part, point guards need time to progress. But Scoot Henderson is about to set the league on fire from his very first season. He's an incredible incredible athlete, undersized, but able to dunk over just about anybody. Was in all the way, all the way. On the take, Henderson oh! it <laughs> He's a good, pesky defender that takes a lot of risks, but he's never a slouch on the defensive end of the ball. He's able to get a lot of steals and blocks. Players as dedicated as Scoot rarely become worse defenders when they hit the NBA. He'll be more disciplined and smarter on that end when he has a good coach on his side. Now his jumper is a work in progress, but unless you're Ben Simmons, talented players always find a way to develop a jumper in today's NBA. But what separates Scoot from everyone else in the draft class is his creativeness and his instinct. He knows where his teammates will be on any given play, and he knows how the defense will react. He's almost impossible to stop when he's headed to the basket, but if you're able to, he's smart enough to dish it to the open man. The term combo guard has fallen out of favor in recent years, considering just about any guard is able to pass and score in today's league. He can burn you in any way possible, but you know that he'll look to set up his teammates first. That's the type of play that will translate well into the NBA. That's the type of play that winners have. LeBron James, Steph Curry, Dwayne Wade, all cut from the same cloth. So why was Scoot overshadowed by Wemby? It's simple, really. Wemby can do this. Wemby is seven foot five with handles and a jumper. We haven't really ever seen that. It's like Kevin Durant mixed with Gumby. Scoot, for the most part, isn't different. He isn't unique. Wemby's a unicorn, while Scoot plays pretty similarly to every other guard in the league. But what Scoot does, he does perfectly. Being more recognizably different doesn't necessarily mean he's a better prospect. And because of Wemby's tall, thin frame, he's bound to have a few injuries. Scoot, on the other hand, has an athletic body type that can withstand some hits. Do you think Scoot should have been picked above Wemby? Let us know in the comments. Why are we so sure that Scoot will be great?
There are three reasons why, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Scoot Henderson will become an NBA star. Three times he's proven he's got what it takes to make it big. Matchup against Wemby. When G League Ignite, Scoot's team for the last couple of years, was slated to play two exhibition games against Wemby's Metropolitans 92, the league went into a media frenzy. This is like if the two best players in college basketball matched up in the NCAA championship. We get to definitively see who's better. Now you probably saw the highlights. 28 points, 9 assists. He scored efficiently, which might be his only flaw in his game. He shot 11 for 21 from the field and 2 of 3 from the 3. Most importantly, he got the win. Wemby put up his stats to 37 points, 5 blocks, but Scoot led his team to victory. Now at the end of the day, isn't that what you want from a draft pick? A guy who makes your team win? And in the second exhibition game, he was injured in the first quarter and sat the rest of the game. I mean, sure he's a competitor, but he's not going to risk more injury in a friendly game. With Scoot off the court, Ignite lost. But more than anything, his post-game quote was what showed the world he's a winner. The game was televised, so I wanted everyone watching on TV to, by the end of the night, know who Scoot Henderson was. I came into the game with the mindset that I was going to kill. That was the season I wanted to kill. I was in that mode that night, and it was really fun to be noticed, to have my name heard, see my name on TV that night at Lucky Penny, and to be on SportsCenter. They had my highlights up there, and that's what you work for. He's got the mindset that he will go for the kill, and that game proved that ain't just talk. He picks the brains of better players. The old saying goes, smart people surround themselves with smarter people. Good players surround themselves with better players. They learn from the best so they can become the best. While some players spend their free time playing Call of Duty, and others, like Anthony Edwards famously said, don't even watch basketball, Scoot Henderson is out there practicing with greatness. Now Scoot's one flaw is his inefficient shooting. Steph is the greatest shooter to ever walk the earth. You think that's a coincidence? Great people flock together. Together. When Carmelo Anthony was drafted in 2003, rumors came out that he didn't pick up a basketball between the NCAA tournament and his first practice with the Denver Nuggets. Sure, he became a Hall of Famer, but he wasn't near the same level of guys like Kobe Bryant, who sought out the mentorship of Michael Jordan when he was drafted. Scoot's in good company. Scoot's business interests. Speaking of Steph, Scoot sought him out for mentorship on more things than just basketball. Steph has been one of the most developed business minds in the NBA for a decade, and Scoot's following his lead. While that doesn't necessarily translate to NBA success, it does take maturity. People who succeed in one thing generally succeed in many things. It's no coincidence that LeBron and MJ, the two best players in history, are also the two most influential NBA businessmen. At only 19 years old, Scoot's interest in business enterprises shows that he's wise beyond his years. Who does Scoot look up to? On the court, Scoot's named three different players that he looks up to, and each of them points to an important part of his game. Russell Westbrook. I used to watch Russell Westbrook highlights before games. His aggressiveness is like that dog in you that you've got to have. I try not to mimic it, but see how I can bring it out of myself. While Russ hasn't exactly aged all that well, his advanced stats show that he's not quite as good as his basic numbers suggest, and his Lakers stint ended pretty poorly. He's been one of the most electrifying players of the last decade, a highlight reel in himself. If Scoot can capture half of that, and maybe a little more efficiency, he's headed for a good place. Allen Iverson. And then I watch uh, Allen Iverson, just his flair and you know, his unique ability to, to score the ball and, you know, even off the court square. AI was a fiery competitor who was so revered in the NBA, he was still playing all-star games long after he was washed up and still getting big minutes because his coaches were scared of taking him out. He was always the smallest guy on the court, but he always stood tall. Not a bad role model for Scoot. Kobe Bryant, the Black Mamba. Whatever you think of Kobe, no one denies his work ethic and dedication to the craft. Every single day, he'd work to be better than the last. 
Anyone with that type of mentality is headed for greatness. What's next for Scoot and the Blazers? The Trailblazers are about to trade Damian Lillard, their franchise player over the last decade, and hand the keys to Scoot. The Blazers have never been able to surround Dame with the right players ever since LaMarcus Aldridge left in 2015. They brought in soft centers, small shooting guards, defensive liabilities. If they learned their lesson from their last franchise player, they'll bring in a tall, bouncy center for Scoot to throw lobs to, a strong defensive 3 and D wing, and a bigger shooting guard to play beside him. If the Blazers give Scoot the room to thrive, the team can be great. But even if they don't, the NBA has still found its next great star. Do you think the league will regret sleeping on Scoot in favor of Wemby? Let us know in the comments. Check out the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia, and garbage rankings for more NBA content.